Okay. Oh boy. We got one. We got woke YouTubers from Andy Pants Gaming. Oh boy. So with every new video I make now, I'm like probably going to get canceled after this one. Oh, well, here we go. So in this video, I want to talk about a disturbing pattern that I've begun to notice in some of our most celebrated. Oh, YouTubers. no. Oh, my God. I watched that guy. I watched that guy. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe I don't think I've ever watched this. I, like many people, was at one time a fan of the act man skill up in Bellular. Yeah. As time has gone on, I've noticed a pretty upsetting trend in the content of all three of these guys. Have you noticed these three creators never call anything woke? They refuse to call anything woke. Uh, I haven't really been paying attention to, to that, really. I mean, I don't know if it's right. Maybe? And if they do, they're making fun of you for using the term. Have you noticed they never talk about the obvious uglification of women in games the past few years? They never talk about ugly women. Uh, maybe? Maybe the, huh. I mean, I never really thought about it like that, really. Um, anytime there's a game with like a lead, like a, with like a female lead and they're ugly, um, I don't know. I just think the game is just not for me. Uh, that's more or less the end of it for me. I'm like, oh, I'm not the target audience. Okay. And then I just walk by. But, uh, like, understandably, I guess these guys are like, like game review bros. Uh, in some sense. And if they're not playing, like, the new, uh, like, hottest game or whatever. And making comments on it. Uh, in some way, shape, or form. Then... I guess they're not doing their job, but, uh, huh. Have you noticed they never talk about the LGBTQI tilde sign seven community and how they basically run video games right now? Do they never talk about how games are gay as hell now? <laughs> um, I, do they not talk about how any of those games are bad? I don't know, given, uh, giving air to like bad games is I think stupid. Uh, maybe, maybe it is because they don't, they're like trying to pander to, uh, their audience and, you know, they, I don't know. It's like this, like opposite side of the spectrum, you pander to your audience for money or you say what you want to say and potentially not make money. I mean, maybe that's. What they're doing i mean i'd imagine most people do that <laughs> i mean who doesn't do that <laughs> uh that's just the environment that i don't know at least uh like youtube and influencers and content creators are or and uh, you just have to understand that maybe not everything that they're saying is like a hundred percent truth but I don't know, like the older I get and the more I watch, it's like eventually every one of my favorite influencers just fucks up. It ends up having like the the craziest fucking takes or whatever, and they end up just like outing themselves, essentially. Uh, <laughs> that's what has happened for the most part. Uh, and it's just a matter of time, essentially. I mean, I, I don't think to date that I have ever, uh, really had like a favorite influencer that hasn't fucked themselves. Uh, maybe, maybe I have, but like, I can't really think of anybody. Have you noticed they never point out obvious racism against white people? In fact, they'll often say lies like racism against white people isn't possible. Have you noticed none of them? Wait, what? Never talk about obvious racism against white people. Uh, uh, maybe again, I, like these aren't really things that I think about whenever I'm watching like an Ackman video or a Bellular video or 
I don't know who this is. Like the skill up thing. I, I don't really watch that. I don't know what it is. But I mean, I usually watch like Pac-Man or Belly or whatever. Something piques my interest. I'm not, I don't watch like every single video, but like if something interesting pops up, I'm like, oh, what's that? But uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're onto something. Them against white people isn't possible. Have you noticed none of them ever talk about the trillions of dollars companies make by bumping up their DEI and ESG initiatives? And by they can companies can bump up whatever they want, like a DEI, ESG, and BlackRock shit. But at the end of the day, if those games aren't selling, what are you doing? I mean, a lot of these types of games have came out and are simply just not selling well at all. So I think we are again. So it's like in the last five years, games were transitioning into DEI or ESG. And now, you know, because every goddamn game has to have like a 10 year like creation cycle for whatever reason, uh, for no good reason. And now we're in like the prime time of like all these DEI games getting released. And now they're coming out and they're just not selling well. So I think there might be a transition back into, I mean, hopefully, uh, just good games, games that sell. I mean, that's my hope. You know, it's like there was like a transition to DEI ESG, and then maybe there's going to be like a transition out of it when all these like companies like BlackRock or whoever's supplying uh, the, these little incentives to these companies and they realize that none of these games are selling. Oh my God. Surprise. Gamers don't give a shit about any of this and neither do the companies. By putting evil woke nonsense in their games. Have you noticed they never talk about the complete removal of masculinity from the stripping of masculinity from games? Uh, I think I watched like that uh, mass. Uh, why are games like not as masculine anymore? Uh, I saw that one. That was a pretty good video, but again, it's just the last five years or maybe even longer. There has been a lot of stripping of masculinity from some games, but all of them, eh, I don't think so. Not all of them, but there is definitely a lot more of this than there used to be when, uh, whenever I was initially growing up, uh, when I was like 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and I was in like the golden era of like video games for like Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, OG, Splinter Cell, Metal Gear Solid, and you know, and all that stuff. It's different now, but I mean, I don't know. I, whenever, whenever I like watch these guys, I don't really think in terms of like, what are they not saying? I just, if I want to think about these types of topics, I will probably go to like a different YouTube channel that more focus, that focuses more, I don't know, that puts more focus into those topics. Video games. So why? Why are these three dudes intentionally avoiding calling out wokeness in games? To put it, um, maybe they're pandering. It simply, it's because these dudes are cucks. They're <laughs> corporate cucks, bowing down to the LGBTQ mafia. <laughs> pussies. All three of these guys are definitely voting for Kamala Harris in November. I heard Endymion call him Acmam one time, and the label definitely fits. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the surface level reasons. I'll get to the deeper yeah. reasons in a minute. Activision, don't talk about DEI and we'll keep giving you insider info. Our lips are sealed. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how any of these guys get any information. I don't care. In it. I just watched an entire Actman video. This is like way above my head. I'm just like some dude. I'm not on the inside with like millions of subscribers and I got everybody knocking on my door to give me the the hot tip uh for for like a new game or whatever i don't know that's like so many degrees of separation about concord i know it was painful 
it contained a lot of tired millennial jokes. Yeah. I'm a millennial, by the way. Takes one to know one. He talked a lot <laughs> yeah. about low player numbers. He talked about how much money it wasted. And then when he gets to the part where you're supposed to talk about why the game failed, he just says, uh, bad gameplay, bad character design. Why do you suppose Ackman doesn't talk about the fact that Concord has three black females in it and not a single white man? Uh, I don't know. Why do you suppose he doesn't talk about the game has three black females? Well, because if the three black females were good and they like were hot and had good gameplay, then it could have been different. You know, if uh, if Concord came out and it had like all the same females, but the females were hot. Uh, I think we'd be having a completely different conversation. And if the gameplay was better, but also, uh, you know, you're Concord, you're a nobody and you're trying to compete with overwatch or Marvel rivals or any other, uh, hero shooter ability spamming game. You know, they're all live service dog shit for the most part. And, the market uh, is just simply saturated in that respect. Females in it and not a single white man. Why do you suppose he doesn't talk about all the LGBTQ plus activists on Twitter who worked on the game? Mm -hmm. Why not talk about all the games, LGBTQ, uh, activist developers on, I don't know. I, I got no fucking clue. Hmm. Interesting. He even at one point in the video makes fun of the idea that bigger breasts would save this game. I mean, it wouldn't hurt, dude. Is that idea so ridiculous? You'll notice <laughs> similar things when watching cucks like Skill Up and Bellular analyze Concord. Why do you suppose these guys spend 30 minutes talking about the gameplay and not one minute talking about how a huge reason the game failed is because the characters are fat and ugly? <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I mean, maybe you're onto something, dude. I mean, I can't really sit here and defend anything that they say. <laughs> so I used to think these three guys were just missing details. I used to give them the benefit of the doubt. But as I've watched their content on a consistent basis, I've realized these dudes are so deep in the gay communist agenda, they can't even <laughs> criticize it anymore. Basically, you've got incredibly evil companies like Activision who support pedophilia and... I mean, I don't really think anybody really likes Activision, to be honest. Like, let's be real. <laughs> Satanism and push DEI initiatives and also spend billions and billions of dollars a year on marketing. Now, do you think they're going to give a YouTuber like me who calls them out on a consistent basis a sneak peek and a tour of the studio? Of course. Probably not. <laughs> of course not. They want a shill. They want an empty shill like Skill Up who won't bring up the woke stuff. They want somebody who will be an empty mouthpiece and they can just pour talking points into them while they regurgitate them out. Actman is indeed good at playing an act. He's good at appearing natural and looking like he's riffing. The reality is he's reading a careful script that has definitely been run by his handlers at... He's reading a script and is very careful not to piss off the broken... Hello, what? We're on for 11, right? The last miracle dialogue list. I mean... Bro, essentially it's like... The, if if you're accusing like one side of being like shills, I could easily just uh, say that the other side is being shills because any like take any talking point that one side says, turn it to the opposite, and that's the thought. Uh, that's the point that the other side has. Uh, whether or not one side is like pretending that they have some sort of idea uh, about like morals, and, and they're just What's the word called? Grifting? Peddling ideas only for the sake of money? Uh, I think I'm using that correctly. I don't really know. <sighs> Bro, this is like too deep for me. I don't know. Activision and Bungie and other DEI departments. Again, notice these guys never mention BlackRock, ESG, or any of the gay, communist, globalist cancer that these companies push. I don't think gamers in general think about BlackRock. 
even though that I think that whole like what is BlackRock and that like some sort of investing firm that's like trillions and quadrillions of dollars, and they're they're it's like the main thing, the the organization that peddles all these like DEI uh, incentives or whatnot to these like game companies. I think I'm not sure. <laughs> um. I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe they're invested in BlackRock. Uh, I don't know. And they don't want to like upset anything or uh, to like hurt their. Uh, I don't know, like investment or anything. I I don't fucking know, dude. Uh, that's kind of again. That's like so many degrees of separation. I found this article on screen here about Bellular that was definitely interesting. It basically talks about how he's been given insider interviews and gets to see deep behind the scenes information about upcoming World of Warcraft games. Well, probably. I mean, hasn't the dude been playing WoW since like the beginning? And it's like they're not like an official hashtag partner. They're like an unofficial hashtag partner. So because they're an unofficial partner, uh, they don't have to follow the the normal rules of being like a partner or or whatever you want to call it. I think there's other people that um that do that. I I really uh, am just guessing here, but I'd imagine that how it, that's how it goes. Um, yeah. But part of his ability to get that info is to continue to be a corporate shill for Activision and parrot the talking points they want. He's a good little sheep and never asks about DEI or ESG. This is why even if they wanted to, Actman, Bellular, and SkillUp can't talk about the woke agenda. These low-T beta males have been bought and sold by Activision, by Sony, <laughs> by Microsoft, by Bungie. Sure, they can have complaints about gameplay and too many microtransactions and stuff like that, but you will never hear these guys complaining about why women are so ugly in video games now because they're good corporate servants. Mm. One mistake I think a lot of people make is thinking that just because these guys will say a game is terrible, they must be objective. Not so. A journalist... I don't know, like... <laughs> the Gollum game is like a literal layup on why the game was bad like i think you could show this game to like a 10 year old and the 10 year old would probably say that game bad <laughs> this looks like a mobile game not so a journalist or content creator is not judged by their ability to say a game is bad they're judged by their ability to be able to breach any topic mm, wait let me see let me see they're judged by their truly objective creators are free to talk about any topic uh, I'd probably say yes, but with the freedom to talk about any topic, there may or may not be repercussions for your criticisms of a damn video game, uh, which is, you know, kind of scary to think about if you're trying to be like a content creator, bro, uh, and you just talk shit about, uh, games like what's good, what's bad and whatnot, why this is good, why this is bad. Uh, I mean... I've been like a, a casual internet tourist for as long as I can remember. I've been like a casual game player uh, for, I don't know, since I got my first, uh, I don't know, what do you call it? Uh, N64 or Sega. Uh, the, like all this behind the scenes shit of you have to play nice or we're not going to give you the inside scoop and tips. This is just like too much for me. And I don't know, maybe I'm not cut out for like that level of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Of like inside access, maybe. I don't know. Your ability to be able to breach any topic. The fact that these don't talk about DEI and we'll keep giving you insider info. Creators have never talked about DEI, ESG, and the woke propaganda indicates to me either A, they're censoring their real thoughts, or B, these guys are the propaganda machines themselves. Also, there's no way they're not aware of it. Every there is zero chance these guys are unaware of the woke outrage right now. Um, They're probably aware of it, 
and they're probably just choosing not to, I don't know, pay it any mind, if anything. I mean, I'm just guessing here. I don't know, like, what the heck they're doing. I mean, like, all, all this dumb social bullshit is, it's just bullshit to me. <laughs> There's, like, bigger issues in the world besides uh, social issues of, like, all this dumb shit, like DEI, ESG. Every third comment on YouTube is calling out woke garbage. So these guys are either willing corporate cucks or unwilling corporate cucks. Uh, both are bad. Either way, they're owned by the corporations. Zooming out a little bit, another interesting issue here is the debate around company structure and the corporate life of video game companies. These mm. three creators always toe the woke slash communist party line rather than identifying the real problem. Yeah, always toe a communist party line. The actual workers at the bottom. They are the problem. Let me give you, Wait, what? you an example. So I've talked to a lot of people in the AAA game industry confidentially the past few months. I can't Ever since my video went viral, people have been DMing me about stuff. Can't reveal their identities. Okay. Companies like Ubisoft have a president, a board of directors, and these are the guys who just care about the money, basically. Uh -huh. Below this line right here, you have all the creatives. Usually the person in charge of the creative work is the studio head, game director, somebody like that, and it's usually a whole group of people. Then below the studio heads, you have the 500 or 1,000 people who work at the company. Damn. When stuff goes bad and you have a game like Concord that fails, homo leftists like Bellular always <laughs> blame the president. It's the billionaires. It's the billionaires, they screech. But after talking to a ton of people in the AAA industry the past few months, I've come to learn this. Billionaires have no idea what kind of game their game company is making. Wow. They actually have no idea what kind of game Ubisoft is making. Well, they're not gamers. <laughs> Bro. To be at this level and have this amount of money is so alien to me. Like, people with this amount of money are aliens. They, they might as well be from another world. And they are dictating uh, your entertainment and what you, they, you think you should be entertained by. And it's these guys that house all the stories. These guys create the stories, the worlds, and whatnot. And these, these guys actually build that shit. These guys, these are the idea guys. And these are the building bros. And these guys just have money. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's kind of crazy to think that you could be so stupid to just give someone money, but you not have any idea what you're giving them money for. Like, do would any of these do any of these guys play like video games? Probably not, right? Probably often they're like luxury yacht like doing like fucking billionaire shit <laughs> oh man jesus billionaires don't really care what kind of game the creatives are making billionaires just want money to be made so gay communists like Ackman, Bellular, and Skillup, whenever they talk about the industry actually want you to be distracted from the real problem the studio employees themselves Oh, well, creators are wrong about the problem, where the problem is coming from. But wouldn't it also be like kind of here? Aren't don't these guys just like uh make the stuff that they're told to make? And these guys like are responsible for like the, the like everything. They're responsible for overseeing everything. The studio and the people on the bottom are the ones who actually make the game. They are the ones with pronouns in their bio. They're the Oh. Okay. They're actually on our side. The board. Well, they're not really on our side. They just want money. And the wanting of money is like the overarching thing. They want games to sell. All right. Gamers, we want to buy good games. So in that respect, they're on our side.
gamers care about having a good game, directors don't give a shit about having a, a good game. They want the game to be good so it'll sell. But that's literally it. <laughs> but if it's the creatives that are fucking up, well, uh, from the past like five years and then current times, uh, they are reaping all the, the rewards that they have sown. Uh, they make their little DEI game or whatever. And it's like, okay, the general population of gamers, you have to buy this. No, we don't. <laughs> that's, that's not for me. I'm not the target audience. You guys want to target this type of person? Then go ahead and do that. There's nothing stopping you from making whatever game you want. It's your game. You do with it what you want, but you don't have to force me to buy it. And that's just it. Like if a, if you if you see a game and you don't like how it looks or plays or whatever the case is, you don't like how the characters look, they're too ugly, whatever. Uh, all you have to do is simply do nothing. <laughs> and everybody will just lose their mind because you're not doing anything. <laughs> that's the funny part <laughs> the ones with pride flags in their bio it's the actual people on the bottom who are making these games trash all you need to do is get on twitter to see how true this is illustrators designers people like kim belair like i said they're always what? all you need to do is get uh, spartans work best when they stand together we're proud to stand by our blah 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 community and colleagues to help us make halo better every single day this is stupid because the company of Halo doesn't really care uh, about these issues. This is stupid. This is just, uh, what is it called? Uh, virtue signaling, I think. I might be using that wrong. I don't know. But like, it's like companies don't actually care about any of these fucking issues. That's so stupid. It's ridiculous. Get on Twitter to see Concord Dev writes off critics. Why would I care about a bunch of talentless freaks hating on it? Uh, well, <laughs> it's not so much the critics. It's literally everybody that makes a review on the game. If the, a reviewer of a game falls under the umbrella of a critic, well, then that's what you think. I mean, it's whatever. Um, the talentless freaks hating on it. Well, who's really talentless when your game didn't sell? So that's what I would ask. <laughs> How true that you spend eight years on a damn game and... <laughs> How many units did it sell and how many uh, concurrent players were there at like peak? Was it like 600 or some bullshit like that? <laughs> Your game lasted two weeks. <laughs> Who's really talentless? <laughs> this is illustrators, designers, people like Kim Belair. Like I said, they're always gay Satanists and everybody in the creative department at a video co game company has pronouns and gay flags in their bio. This, like I am getting... So many mixed signals from like everything. I don't know what to think anymore. Be gay, hail Satan. If <laughs> oh my god, gay satanic venom feminism. I can't even say it right. Feminism and feminism. <laughs> the wild thing that's happening in the video game industry. The billionaires funding Ubisoft are st starting to realize they're being duped. Right now is the chickens are coming home to fucking roost. Billionaire investors for 20 years used to be able to invest money in Ubisoft and get a return on that money. But Ubisoft has been a complete shit show this year. And Why are we funding these gay <laughs> dog shit games again? They're not making any money. Uh, yeah. And it's so funny because there's like, in general, whenever you're thinking about um anything like in public, you know, like things that make public, you know, products and marketing go around. There's like a positive review on it, a negative review on it. And you think that's it. All right. But there is another option that is worse. That nobody ever talks about because it actually works. There is the positive option where people are talking positively about your, your product or whatever. People are talking negatively about it, uh, you know, but there is the third option that is 
You simply ignore it and pay it no mind. Whenever people are talking about your product, you know, that's why the whole saying, uh, what do you call it? Even a uh, bad publicity is still good publicity because people are still talking about your product and it's like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, public aware, pu brand awareness or, or some shit like that. So, and even that's like a little gray because you can't be like too bad, uh, but you can kind of be bad for whatever reason. But the third option of people simply ignoring your product and not paying attention to it at all is uh, the worst option that you want for a product because if people are just ignoring it and not doing anything, not talking good, not talking bad about it, your product theoretically doesn't exist. <laughs> but I don't know. Whenever it comes to like games and shit, everyone likes to jump on the bandwagon of, oh, let's talk about it. It's the new thing. Let's talk about it. I mean, if you really don't like a game, don't talk about it. Don't pay it mind. Don't give it any win. Don't give it an error. Nothing. But since we're talking under the guise, or not the guise, under the umbrella of, I don't know, like entertainment and con consumerism, then people are going to talk about it. <laughs> Investors are going to start wondering why their $1 billion didn't turn into $2 billion this year. And this is honestly the sea change that I'm hoping for. This mm. is what we are all praying happens. The shit. <laughs> I want the billionaires to come in and fire all the studio heads and put people in there who can actually make a masculine freaking game for one. How about no more gay games? I mean, to be fair, there's probably some good, it's probably some good people that are actually good at their job. But I mean, it's just like the graph or your little infographic shows that like it's literally everybody hundred percent. But I'm sure there's people in here that are just like, yeah, I might be LGBTQ, but I'm not like on the extremist side, and I don't really care to shoehorn in my activist ideas, and I'm just gonna be good at my job. I'm sure those people exist, and it it's kind of sad because they are probably most likely getting lumped in with all of the other radical people. Go heads and put people in there who can actually make a masculine freaking game. Much the same way that all the developers and, you know, just put the same infographic right here, much the same way uh, that all the developers, illustrators, so on and so forth. There can be people that are just bad at their job in here. Just like there could be people that are bad at their job there, there could be people bad at their job on this side. All right? Look at Duke Nukem. That's like a super masculine game. But uh, it was pretty dog shit. <laughs> yeah. Game for once. Guys, the funny thing... That masculine games can be dog shit. Too. They can be. Is the billionaires are on our side. We want games with hot chicks and manly dudes. Those are the games we are buying. Yeah. Billionaires actually want us to get what we want. The problem is 90% of the people who work at game studios are gay Satanists. The <laughs> that was a little, a little much, but <laughs> whatever. You based studios out there are giving us exactly what we want right now. Asian studios, Czech Republic. Yeah, isn't Elden Ring one of the greatest games of all time ever made? Don't people... Like on the the radical uh, like right, consider this game to be woke. For for some reason, was it because like the last uh, boss, like the Rose Lady, well, what's her name, Melania? Don't they consider her to be like gay or something? I don't fucking remember. I still haven't played Elden Ring yet, dude. <laughs> like people consider Elden Ring to be woke, so Elden Ring is just a good game. So I don't know. Public studios, Eastern European studios, every other studio out there in the West is chugging the woke homo mind virus and is done. Basically, they might as well close up shop. All right. So in closing, look, honestly, act man and skill up can have whatever political opinion they want. They can be cucks and vote for Kamala this year. I don't <laughs> care. My whole reason for making this video is to make you aware of the people whose videos you are watching. Anytime you watch an Act Man video or a Skill Up video or a Bellular video, just know you are funding the current establishment of video games. I think that's a little, a little much. 
I th that's too many degrees of separation, dude. <laughs> I think for like, even for like an educated old ass gamer like me, I'm like mid thirties. That's too much. It's like you're funding it by giving him a view and I don't know. It's like, I can't wrap my head around it really. Like, Like, I just don't consume entertainment like that. Like, everything, I have to do all the research and make sure every form of entertainment, uh, uh, like, the per the people that are delivering my entertainment, they all have the same morals. I, it's like, nobody consumes entertainment like that. <laughs> all right? Look at this phone. Look at, look at any smartphone. Everybody has a smartphone. And... Lo and behold, uh, what did it take to make that damn smartphone? Well, it took, like, uh, some people in whatever country in, like, the cobalt mines, uh, damn near dying, uh, to give you the, the, the cobalt for the cobalt to go into the phones and, uh, what do you call it? And now everybody just has a, uh, a cell phone with cobalt in it. All right. So you can't really accuse, like, one side of uh, pandering when nobody on either side really cares about the morals of uh, of anything, really, to be honest. I mean, even the clothes that you're probably wearing, it's probably, probably some shit that is, like, made in China, all right? Whether or not it's like, oh, communist China is so bad, blah, blah, blah. Like, bro, there's so much shit in your house probably made in China. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> you are funding... The LGBTQ games. You are funding woke games every time you watch Actman, Bellular, and Skill Up. Conversely, every time you watch Endymion, Jay the Concept, Synthetic Man, Short Fat Otaku, or Andy Pants, we are going against the woke agenda and the woke mind virus. Oh, guys, by the way, before I get out of here, please go buy this game, The Great Rebellion, right now. I've been playing it. It's basically a game that makes fun of woke people. It's a very anti-woke game, and it's the mm. only game of its kind that I've ever played. And the gameplay is pretty fun, too. It's just like a 2D... Is it like that Alex Jones game? <laughs> the pixel shooter, but the content is very fun. Also, go play Solash, too. Um, if you're into RPG roguelikes with uh, procedurally generated worlds, this game was created... <laughs> this is awesome. This game was created by a Polish developer, and he refused to put gay relationships in the game because, you know, it's his game, and they're trying to cancel him on Twitter right now. Jesus. Another non-woke indie game to check out right now is Legends of Boom. It comes out October 1st. Uh, some friends of the channel here are making this game. None of these games are huge budget triple A games, but they are by non-woke developers. They are fighting the cancer in the industry. And just based on that, you should go support these games. So I'm going to link all three of them down below and I'm going to get out of here. Bye guys. All right. I mean, I hear you out, dude. Um, I don't know. Like, I think you're, It would be nice to have like a smarter consumer as like a general consumer base of video games. But, and I do think it is like trending to, you know, people that grew up with like Sega uh, and are just continue to play games up until like their thirties and forties and whatnot. I do think the general uh, gamer is like slightly more educated than they were before, but the rate at which it is happening is probably not as fast as the amount of studios that are coming up and just, you know, spending 10 years on like a, a game only for it to come out and be a failure. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, plus you have like a bunch of like, uh, like kids in their like tens, teens or, or whatever. And they're, uh, you know, all the iPad kids, people that just grew up with internet and they are slowly going through the same cycle that uh that we're going through and learning about video games and all that shit and uh i don't know it's uh i mean you you do raise a good point in that it, it's kind of i don't know like i've never really viewed any of those uh like youtubers like bellular actman as a uh like they're being woke or anything i just have never thought about it that deeply if I want, like I said before, if I want to think about something that deep, I'll just go watch somebody else.
but eh, I mean, I, th I thought it was a uh, kind of funny that you're just like dropping names left and right, but it's whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, overall, eh, <laughs> this is a very shot cally uh, video it was that Ackman is going to ask his wife's boyfriend if he could <laughs> stay late, make a response. 90% of creators, uh, virtue signal because money. Yeah, bro. Most people, uh, would virtue signal because money, because you know what sucks? Uh, being poor and not making money, uh, only making like 30 K a year or 40 K a year or 50 K a year. Uh, that sucks, bro. If somebody wants to pay me like a couple hundred thousand to peddle some stupid ass ideas, I'll do that shit. Sure. Just pay, yo, I'll give you my bank account number. <laughs> I don't want to be fucking poor. Fuck that. Oh my God. But, eh. I mean, it's good to be educated and I don't know. <laughs> Overall, cool video, but uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right, later.